Next on three, deadly gun violence claims yet another team in Vicksburg. Learn how the city is now responding to the uptick in youth-related crimes coming up. Plus, we'll head to Washington where reactions from both sides continue following President Biden's State of the Union address. And tonight, the Mississippi Coliseum will be packed as folks get ready for the 2023 Dixie National Rodeo. We'll have a preview coming up on this Friday. Three on your side, WLBT News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Ethan Good. We begin this news now with a live look at first alert traffic. This is I-55 at the stack. Traffic appears to be moving smoothly and there are no wrecks to report at this time. Happening now, a 13-year-old boy is dead following a shooting in Vicksburg. Police identified the teenage victim as Carlon Woodland. Now two other teens and a 19-year-old man is behind bars for their role in the crime. We spoke with the mayor and the police chief about what happened. No one under the age of 17 should be on the streets of the city of Vicksburg, and if so, you're going to get arrested. Vicksburg Mayor George Flags is now addressing the uptick in deadly gun violence amongst teens in his city. This after three people, including two 16-year-old teens, were arrested in the shooting death of 13-year-old Carlene Woodland last month. Woodland was found shot to death just before midnight on January 30th at the McDonald's on Clay Street. Police Chief Penny Jones says her officers responded to reports of a shooting at Washington and Clay Street and Speed Street before they found Woodland. We made it on scene. It was found that a juvenile had been shot. Um, from there, officers got another call to respond to the area of Clay Street near McDonald's where another subject had been shot. Chief Jones says two other 15-year-olds had been shot in the foot and shoulder, but they survived. Days after the shooting, Vicksburg police arrested 19-year-old Corey DeMichael Lawrence, Demetrius Comier, and Philip Moore Jr., who are both 16-year-olds. All suspects have been charged with first-degree murder and aggravated assault. After several months of teen violence across Vicksburg, Mayor Flagg says he is putting his foot down on crime. I tried to be nice about this, and look what happened. We got to take back the streets of Vicksburg. A citywide curfew remains in effect in Vicksburg until March 2nd. Mayor Flagg says there will be exceptions to the curfew, including coming from school activities, work, or going to some type of health protocols. Seven more Memphis police officers are expected to be disciplined as the investigation continues into the death of Tyree Nichols. Nichols, who was 29, died days after the, being beaten by police during a traffic stop. Five of the officers have been charged with second degree murder. The New York Times is reporting that those officers admitted he took a picture of Nichols battered and bleeding and sent the photo to several people. On Tuesday, the Memphis City Council voted unanimously to pass multiple public safety reforms in the first council meeting since Nichols died. It was a tense environment Tuesday night in Washington, D.C. for President Joe Biden's State of the Union address as he faced several instances of being heckled by Republican lawmakers. One of those instances came after Biden accused some lawmakers of trying to phase out medical care and Social Security. The president still urged both pol political parties to work together and try to re rebuild the economy. Biden told it economic success for the U.S. after ending COVID-19 lockdowns and promised to veto a national ban on abortion. He also argued for police reform and assault weapons ban after recognizing Brandon Tissay, who stopped the California Lunar New Year's mass shooter in January. He saved lives. It's time we do the same. Ban assault weapons now. Ban them now. Once and for all. Biden's expected to start building momentum for another presidential campaign as he seeks a second term in office. A special judge will have to be appointed to hear the latest case involving the battle over who will pick up the trash in Jackson. The chancellors of the Fifth Chancery Court District have rescued themselves from this latest case. Last week, attorneys for the Jackson City Council filed suit in Hines County's Chancery Court, seeking court's permission to choose his own contractor. They say the mayor has refused. This news comes as the Mississippi Supreme Court has yet to rule in a case regarding the mayor's veto powers and as Richard's disposal continues to pick up trash under the city emergency contract. Trash collection will end March 31st. More medical marijuana dispensaries are open shop across the state. 
Jacoby Rivers has reaction from one owner who says his need to help Mississippi patients is personal. John Arnold is on a mission to help people beat something he struggled with for years. Arnold broke his foot in 18 places after a work injury in 2004, the start to his opioid addiction. Only other alternatives to my, my pain was to either get more surgeries or take the narcotic pain pills that they were prescribing me. Arnold eventually grew tired of taking the medications, but after a major car accident, he found himself taking more pills instead of surgery. In my mind, I'm thinking, I can get by. I'll just go day to day, one day at a time, and just take the, the pain pills that the doctor prescribes, because if the doctor's prescribing them, it must be okay. But then he decided to try another way to treat his pain. And he said, why don't you look into the medical marijuana? He says, I see the research out here. I'm looking at what it's doing to other patients around the world. And when I got home that evening after work, I rolled me a joint, took me a couple puffs off of it, and it was actually amazing. The pain wasn't there. After experiencing relief and beating his addiction, Arnold says he wants to help others beat their addiction by opening a dispensary in South Mississippi. Having a store like this, a pharmacy, in a neighborhood with, with older generation, younger generation, there's all kinds of different people that have different disorders that need some kind of a substitute besides that narcotic. And I'm glad that I can be a part of it to try to help people get away from these opioids because they almost ruined my life. Jacoby Rivers, WLOX News Now. We have new information now after researchers at the University of Houston have developed a vaccine targeting fentanyl overdoses. They say the new drug could be a breakout for many who are trying to quick opioids. The vaccine is designed to block fentanyl from entering the brain. Researchers plan to start manufacturing clinical grade vaccine trials in the coming months. As we continue celebrating Black History Month, we highlight the versatile textures of African American hair. Brandon McGill has a look now. We spend a lot of time making sure our hair is, is in great condition. Especially in our, in, with our race. A place where confidence is built and the history is rich. A hair salon, especially in the black community. Black hair, I think that it's becoming um, a more of a topic where people are accommodated to what our natural hair is. And many women of color have grown to embrace it, despite society's expectations. I, I just know that many black women, they're so prideful when it comes to their hair. Do you think that dates back to our roots as far as possibly trying to escape like oppression or trying to conform to look like other people? Yeah, um, you know, society told us what was right and what was wrong. Um, you know, just seeing what people or women in general look like on television and magazines, you know, um, back in past times. And so, you know, we didn't know we didn't have a whole lot of education on our hair. And so we did what we thought was correct. And most of the time that was to straighten it. Salon owner Liz Romanick says black hair goes far beyond being just hair, but more so a sense of identity. Hair just has evolved from the 1600s up until now with so many different styles and trends, um, from pressing combs to relaxers to temporary straighteners, extensions, braids, and etc. And I can even remember me being very young, my grandma, we would go up to the stove, I'll sit there for hours in the kitchen as she pressed hot comb my hair. An act was introduced in March 2022 to prohibit race-based hair discrimination in the workplace and schools, the Crown Act, which stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. I think that that's very important. I think that will protect um, those feelings that black women kind of face because we're able to walk into our workplace and not worry about how we appear to others, or would we get in trouble, or would someone say something negative about how our hair is. Romanick says in her salon, black hair is an open book, offering a variety of services black women didn't have decades ago. I'm, I'm just grateful that we are now able to be educated. Um, we can go to a lot of different trade shows and get the information that we need, and we also have the internet that's so accessible, um, which wasn't so accessible when I first started. In Hattiesburg. I think our hair uh, just speaks in itself by itself. Um, if your hair is not right, you're really not right. According to the African American Registry, hair salons and barbershops remain among some of the most successful black businesses. Happening today, tickets go on sale for the James Taylor concert at the Brandon Amphitheater this summer.
You can enjoy an evening with James Taylor on June 13th. Taylor has sold more than 100 million albums, earning gold, platinum, and multi-platinum awards since the self-release album he dropped in 1968. He has also been inducted into the both Rock and Roll and Songwriters Hall of Fame. And tonight, ticket sales continue for this year's Dixie National Livestock Show and Rodeo in Jackson. Fans can expect plenty of horse and bull riding fun, along with other shows and competitions. The entertainment lineup will include Randy Hauser, Chancey Williams, Laney Wilson, and Mark Chestnut. Those events will stretch from this weekend to next Wednesday. Right now, final preparations are underway in Glendale, Arizona for Super Bowl 57 on Sunday. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs are already there getting psyched up for the big game. The two teams now in Arizona practicing at the State Farm Stadium at the same time. Crews are getting the field set and putting up signs. There are also a handful of players from our area who will be a part of it. Here's a list of those players with Mississippi connections who are set to play on Sunday. Kickoff is at 5.30. This is WLBT First Alert Traffic. Here's another look at your live First Alert Traffic. This is I-55 at High Street. Traffic appears to be moving smoothly and there are still no accidents to report. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here later this evening.